Hey guys, welcome back to Montevideo. Today we have a masterclass in showing you how to set up the wireless bridge from Montevideo. So in this one, we're gonna be taking you from step one, which is plugging these in and getting power, all the way to actually setting it up, getting it wirelessly connected to your guys' network and with each other, and having a fully operational camera system on your remote end. So it does get a little complicated. It does involve actually plugging these into your guys' network directly, logging into them with a computer through an IP address, and actually setting them up to communicate with each other. So, welcome to Montevideo Masterclass. This is going to be the wireless bridge tutorial setup. Let's get started. Okay, first off, we do need to get our hardware together. So, we do need two wireless bridges for this project. We're also gonna need access to a router, and if you guys are having multiple cameras on the remote end, you're gonna need access to a PoE switch. Keep in mind you want as many ports on this switch as you plan to have cameras. Before we get these bridges plugged in, we need to label which one's going to be our access point and which one is going to be our client. So for this one, I'm gonna take a little bit of masking tape and I'm gonna label this one as A for access point. And I'm going to label this bridge as C for client. Now the access point bridge, this is the one that's going to stay at the main property. It will be connected to your NVR and will be sending and receiving the signal. Your client bridge, this is the one that's going onto your remote point, your outbuilding, wherever you guys are planning to plant these cameras. This will be connected to a PoE switch, again, if you're planting multiple cameras, or if you guys just have a single camera, it will be connected directly to that. Keep in mind, if you guys are doing multiple bridge units, you're going to have one access point at the home station, and the rest of the bridge units will be considered client units. All right, starting with the access point bridge. First off, we need to remove the cover, so just push down and slide that off, and that's gonna expose two ports. Running from the LAN2 slash PoE in, that's the port on the right side, we need to plug this into a PoE injector. Now, each wireless bridge should come with its own PoE injector. First, we're gonna plug the injector into a wall outlet like so, and then we're gonna run an ethernet cable going from the data and power out port on the injector all the way back to the bridge in the LAN2 slash PoE in port. Our next step is to plug it into a router. So we wanna run an ethernet cable from the bridge's LAN1 slash PoE out all the way to the back of the router. And you just wanna use one of the standard plugins on your router here. Once you guys get that connected, we wanna check the side of the bridge and we should see the indicator light activated. This means that the bridge is on and it's ready to be accessed. So our next step here is we are going to hop onto a computer that is connected to this router, whether physically or through a Wi-Fi signal, and we're gonna log into the bridge to set it up. Okay, once we're on the computer, we're gonna open up a web browser and the first place I'd like you to go is Montevue.com. This is our main website. Once you're there, you're gonna click on Help Center, should be towards the top right here. And then once we are in Help Center, go ahead to the search bar and we're gonna type in IP config, just like so. Once it comes up with this download, we're gonna click on that. For the Windows users, this is the Windows version. However, if you are on an Apple computer, I will put the link in the description below to another IP config tool that is designed for Apple computers. So go check that out if you guys need that. So once you guys get this downloaded, go ahead and open up the IP config tool. And you'll notice that obviously we have a lot of devices on our network. So in order to isolate a wireless bridge, go ahead and unclick all, and then we're gonna put a check mark or whatever into other. That way it just shows us PoE switches and wireless bridges. Gets it isolated a little bit. So here you're going to identify your wireless bridge because it will be uninitialized. So the first thing we need to do is initialize it. So we're gonna click this check mark on the left. We're gonna go down below and we're gonna click on initialize. It's gonna bring up this little screen. We're going to click initialize. And then on this next screen, it's going to ask us to enter in a password. Now for this one, I would recommend using the exact same password as you guys use for your NVR. That way it keeps it flush and everything can communicate without any issues. However, you guys can really give this whatever password you want, just don't forget it. Enter it in again, just to double confirm that the password is correct. And then below, you guys don't need to enter an email address, just uncheck that box and go ahead and hit next. This next screen is just asking for auto updates, all that stuff, just hit okay. It doesn't really apply to a wireless bridge. 
And then you might notice that a little orange exclamation mark comes up almost like it didn't get initialized. But if you'll notice, if you click on it, it actually did initialize. It just wasn't able to do the auto updates, which doesn't really matter for a wireless bridge. So we're going to click on finish. Okay, the next step here is we notice that it is initialized. However, if you take a look at the IP address, it is different from the rest of the devices on my network. The rest of my devices have 192.168.0. However, this one has a .1. This is a problem because it won't be able to communicate with other network devices. So before we modify the IP address, go ahead and click on settings up top here. And it's gonna ask you to enter in a little password. So we wanna delete what's in there and we wanna put in the exact same password we just initialized the wireless device with. Once that's in there, we're gonna click OK and we're gonna come back, select the wireless bridge by putting a check mark in the box to the left. And this time we're gonna click on Modify IP. The easiest way here is just to click on DHCP and that way your network automatically just gives it a working IP address that's different from anything else on there, which is what you need. Or if you guys really know what you're doing and you're a seasoned veteran, go ahead and give it a custom IP address if you guys know how to do that. Either way, once you guys get the IP changed, go ahead and hit OK refresh the page by hitting this big blue button up top and now we notice that this ip address is changed for my bridge and it now matches the rest of the network devices so now we're ready to log into the wireless bridge so go ahead and click this little e icon over to the right if this doesn't work for whatever reason just take the ip address as written here and go ahead and punch it into the address bar on a web browser of your guys's choosing either way once you guys do that it's going to bring you to the login screen for the wireless bridge Go ahead and enter in that password that you initialized it with. And then it's going to bring you to a setup wizard. Now we want to choose the language that you prefer. I'm going to choose English. And then we want to check this little box down below, recognizing that we have read the terms and agreement. Okay, once we click next, we're going to be asked if we want to do a client or an access point. Now remember, this is our access point bridge, so we're going to choose that as our option we now will be able to choose the name of the bridge. So I'm just gonna call this one home. Frequency, we're gonna keep that on auto. And for the wireless encryption, this just gives your guys' bridge a password, just much like your router has a password. So I definitely highly recommend it. If you click on the WPA2 option, it will make you create a password. Again, I would probably just recommend using the same one. That way you don't have a lot of passwords to remember. And go ahead and hit next. This page is just confirming the IP address. If you already logged into the bridge successfully, don't change the IP address, it's already working. Once you guys hit complete, it's gonna bring up the screen, which is a summary of the bridge and all of its settings. If everything looks good here, go ahead and hit apply. Once it says operation successful, you guys have now completed the setup for your access point bridge, and we're ready to move on to your client bridge. Okay, with the client bridge, it's gonna be the exact same physical setup. We're gonna pop this open plug it into our injector through the PoE in port, and then we're also gonna plug it into our router via the PoE out port. Once you guys have the indicator lights showing up on your client bridge, we're ready to hop over to the computer and we're going to log into it. So on the computer, we're gonna open up the IP config tool. We're gonna to hit that refresh button on top. And now that we see we have a new bridge that is uninitialized. So first off, we're gonna initialize it. Go ahead and click the little checkbox to the left, click initialize. And it's going to ask us for a password. We want to give it the exact same password we gave the first bridge. Go ahead and enter that in again. Uncheck this box for the email and hit next. Same thing as last time. Once we get it initialized, it's going to show us this little yellow mark, but just make sure it says successful. And if it was, we're good and we can hit finish. So we're going to hit the refresh button on top again, and we see that it is initialized. However, we still have that IP address issue with this one as well. So we're going to make sure that the search settings up top still has our password entered in there. So we're going to click that real quick. If it's not, go ahead and enter in the exact same password that you used to initialize the bridge. Okay, now we're ready to modify the IP address. So we're going to select the little box next to it. We're going to click modify IP. And for this one, again, if you guys know what you're doing, you can set a static custom IP address. But if you guys just want it quick and easy, go ahead and click DHCP. And then once we finish this out, we want to look for the green check mark to the right. And that just confirmed that the modify IP was successful. Now, before we hit the refresh button, go ahead and make sure that you guys remember that your access point bridge is a different IP address. Remember that one real quick. And if you notice, mine says 202. So once I hit this refresh button, so now I see the 202. And again, the IP address is the best way to identify which bridge is which and my new bridge got switched to 107, so I know that is my client bridge. 
and we're ready to log into them. So if you guys are ready, we're gonna hit the Internet Explorer icon on the far right, and that's gonna open up a web page with the login screen for the bridge. Go ahead and enter in the password for that one. And then it's gonna bring up the installation wizard. So again, we wanna choose English and then check this box for the agreement, hit next. Now for this one, we wanna choose client and then it's gonna ask us for the network name. So we're gonna go ahead and click this little magnifying glass to the right. And if you guys remember, we made sure our access point was called home. So we're gonna choose that out of the network options. And then because we put a password on our bridge, we're gonna to have to enter that down below here. Once you guys got the password in, go ahead and hit next. This page again has you confirm the IP address. If everything's working and correct, go ahead and leave it alone and hit complete. This page will show you a summary of all of your settings for your client bridge. Go ahead and hit next. And then the final page is we're gonna check this status page over here on the upper left. And when you guys click that, it should give us all the information for the connection to the access point bridge. All right, guys, that status page looks good and everything's online. We're ready for the final phase of the wireless bridge setup. And that is to move the bridges to their final destination and get them hooked up with their cameras. And then of course, wirelessly connected back to one another once we plug them into a power source. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, taking a look at our mounting hardware, the wireless bridge itself has two mounting options. The bottom one is for a vertical pull mount and the upper one is for a horizontal pull mount. You're also gonna have three different pieces of mounting hardware. You're gonna have this little half moon plastic piece that attaches directly to the wireless bridge. You're gonna have this little square plastic piece. And then finally, you're gonna have the metal clamp that actually goes around the pole itself. So starting off the half moon piece, it has this little trigger in here. As you can see, I'm pushing it. That actually releases it from its spot. And so if you guys are doing a vertical pull mount like I will do for this video, you're gonna to wanna to put it up just like this. Now you wanna make sure it locks into place and it's not gonna move. Once the half moon piece is secure, you're gonna take the square piece and you're gonna mount it onto the back of the half moon just like this. Keep in mind the striation lines on the square piece are supposed to be perpendicular to the striation lines on the half moon piece. The last step here is we need to loosen up the metal clamp and get it around the back. So to do that, it has this little Phillips screwdriver head and we're either gonna take a drill or a screwdriver and we're gonna loosen that up until the metal clamp becomes undone. Then you're gonna stick it around the plastic piece just like this. Now keep in mind you can use these other four sections depending on how you're mounting the wireless bridge, but I'm pretty much doing mine straight up with the pole. So I'm gonna do it right here. Okay, we're ready to go outside and mount it to the pole. So this is a little bit tricky as just a single person. However, obviously I was able to get it eventually. It is a much easier job with two people. All you're trying to do is run the clamp around itself through this little gap and then you're going to use the screwdriver in the screw and you're going to tighten it up and as you tighten it the clamp will actually go further and further in and tighten around the pole. This again is really tricky as a single person but eventually you should be able to get it. Okay now that we got that metal clamp secure and it is firmly mounted to the pole we're ready to plug in the cables. Since this is my client bridge, I need to plug it into an injector for power. That's gonna go into slot two on the right side. And then obviously I'm going to run that to my injector, which then goes into a wall outlet. Since this is my client bridge and it's on my remote building, I need to also run it to my PoE switch, which is hosting all of my cameras. So I'm gonna run from port one on the left side all the way to the network port on my PoE switch. The cameras will then occupy the standard PoE ports on that switch. Finally, once you guys have those plugged in, go ahead and cap this with the white cover and you guys are good to go with this wireless bridge. Once you guys have that client bridge all secure and plugged in, we're ready to move on to the access point bridge. This is the exact same step, so I'm not gonna go over it too much in detail. It is exactly like the client bridge, except for we're gonna be mounting it to the main house or the main portion of the property where your guys' NVR and router are located. It's important to remember that these are line of sight type of wireless bridges which means that you can have little to no obstructing features or structures in between the two units. You guys can get away with like a bush or maybe a couple of trees, but you wanna make sure it's a very open area with little to no interference. That way you guys get maximum signal efficiency and you won't have any issues with your guys' connections. Once you guys get that access point mounted, you're gonna run port two to your power, that is your injector, and then plugging that into a wall outlet and then port one on the left side, that is going to run all the way to a, one of your regular ports on your guys's router. Once both bridge units are powered up, they should establish connection right away. 
And then the last step you guys have to do is simply go to your NVR's registration, do a device search on the camera menu, and then the cameras that are attached to the bridge unit and that PoE switch should pop up there. And then you simply just have to add them in like any other network camera that you have before. So that's it guys, the wireless bridge should be all set up. I know it gets kind of complicated, but hopefully you guys followed along and were able to accomplish this one. So if you guys have any further questions on the wireless bridge or the setup that it involves, go ahead and give our tech support or sales team a call. We are here Monday through Friday to answer any questions you guys have. Of course, if you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a like down below, comment if you will, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks guys, you have a great day.